it's time now for the big question in which we tackle a major news story of the day from multiple points of view. Tonight, is Joe Biden fit for high office? An explosive new book about the president has been released in America this month. It's available for sale globally now. It's become a bestseller immediately. It's been written by renowned negotiation expert and political commentator Ed Brodo. The book is called America on Its Knees, The Cost of Replacing Trump with Biden. And it highlights what Brodo sees as a number of major policy errors since Biden entered the White House, including on the economy, pandemic policy and America's departure from Afghanistan. It also raises the health question of whether Joe Biden is physically up to the job. Well, to debate this, I'm delighted to welcome Ed Brodo himself and the legendary Washington-based political analyst and White House correspondent John Christopher Boer, who is the co-founder of Real Political News and a man who knows Joe Biden very well, both professionally and personally. Ed Brodo, let's start with you. What inspired you to devote a year of your life writing a book about Joe Biden? What inspired me? The disaster that's taking place in the United States as a result of this incompetent man sitting in the White House. Fact. Biden is the worst president in my lifetime. Everything he has done has been to the detriment of the United States and its people. Fact. We have the worst inflation in 40 years. People can't pay for their groceries. They can't pay for food. They can't pay their gas. Uh, they can't pay their heating bills. We have millions coming across the border illegally with no supervision. Uh, Biden's terrible policy in uh, withdrawing from Afghanistan has resulted in a disaster for American foreign policy. No one respects us anymore. The country is absolutely on its knees, which is why I call my book America on Its Knees. Well, here's a counterpoint to that before I come to John Christopher, Ed, which is that it was Donald Trump who negotiated the deal with the Taliban to leave Afghanistan. And of course, it was Donald Trump who was in the White House when the pandemic began. And he was the president who began this process of lockdowns and printing money, which is now causing the cost of living crisis. So surely Donald Trump owns at least some of this. Well, look, first of all, he, his policy was let's get out of Afghanistan, which was a good idea, but it wasn't his idea to do it the way Biden did, which was absolutely disastrous. That's all on Biden. And uh, as far as the, the COVID goes, Trump was the one that got us a vaccine. Nobody said that, everybody said that he couldn't do it. And he got us a vaccine in no time flat. So he doesn't get credit for that. Can you explain why not? Because the media hates him. Why does the media hate him? Because they're all in the pocket of the Democratic Party. So there's just a lot of propaganda about Trump. Trump was the best president in my lifetime, and everything that he did accrued to the benefit of the United States. Well, John Christopher Boer, welcome back to the program. Uh, Ed Brodo it's argues that America is in a very bad situation, uh, raging inflation, uh, major crime waves across America's great cities. America not taken seriously globally now as a military power. Um, some argue that the reason why Putin had the courage to invade Ukraine is because the incumbent at the White House is so weak. I can't, I can't begin to tell you how much garbage I have just heard in the last two minutes especially from this guest of yours, Ed, who I've never heard of. I've never heard of his book, and it's preposterous what you're saying. And Mark, I have to say, uh, I've been on your show before, but I'm not going to stand here and listen to nonsense from a gloating man who's semi-smiling. I think he's getting aroused by what I'm saying. He's preposterous. <laughs> Joe Biden, who I've known for, for 30 years, is a compassionate, smart man, We've got a terrific economy is picking up, unemployment is down, and where is he today? This Memorial Day weekend, he's in Texas honoring those children, not soldiers and sailors who've died in wars, but the children who were slaughtered because of the gun lobbyists that go on. And we had Mr. Trump dancing, dancing to the names he was mispronouncing of the 19 children and the two teachers for, for a, a, a convention 
of the National Rifle Association, who talk about being in the pocket, who support the conservative mega Trump people. And Trump had to get his derriere over there, or otherwise they wouldn't take him seriously. They wouldn't give him money to run for president. And this is all hogwash. So I have to say, none of this is true. I'm not going to stand here or sit here. And I love being on your show, Mark, but I'm not going to take this because it's nonsense. And this fellow, who I can see with his mouth hanging open, really has not a clue what he's talking about. Uh, well, John Christopher, <laughs> everyone gets aroused on my show. Uh, but the, the reality not in that is kind that of way. inflation is very, very high. The economy is in trouble. America is printing billions of dollars that they don't have. And many Americans are really worried about the future of their country. The Trump's over, over, overspent and gave tax breaks to his cronies in the GOP. That's where we got this. No one can, no one can uh, control inflation. The fact that gasoline has gone up, I'll give you that, petrol has gone up. We have a war in, in Ukraine. And Biden, uh, Trump actually said the other night that he and, he and Putin had discussed the war in Ukraine and that he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he didn't uh, identify it as the war he went, he would not go into Ukraine. He told this to Trump. Trump knows everything. In the meantime, I grew up a mile and a half away from Donald Trump. I've known him since he was a teenager and I've known his family and I've known the history of his family and they are unpatriotic, un-American and Donald Trump has pulled the wool over this guy's eyes but he's not going to pull the wool over the electorate's eyes in November because he's not going to be, uh, he, in fact, he's losing races already in, in various states. The, the Trumps that he tried to back and push uh, have lost. He will lose and he'll go back to where he is supposed to be the, in the world of nothingness. Ed Brodo, your response. <laughs> well, it's interesting that all this man can do is attack me personally. He doesn't deal with any. Friends, I don't even know you. All the Excuse me, sir. All the things that he says are lies. He is a typical Democratic apologist. How anyone You're a liar. can sit there with a, how anyone can sit there with a straight face and say that our I don't have a straight face. Shape. In our country, would you please ask him to let me finish? Yeah, come on, John. JC, you're better than that. Let's not play these games. Let's have a respectful, a respectful conversation. Speak. How anyone can say that our country is in great shape? This man is just as delusional as his big, uh, big friend, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, first of all, is not a great guy. He is corrupt. He is senile. And uh, the man, everything he does is out to destroy the United States. So Ed, I, Ed, I don't know who this Ed, guy Ed, is. Ed, he Ed never Brodo. heard of me. I never heard of him either. Ed, Ed Brodo, uh, I don't think it's uh, fair, is it, to call the president unpatriotic. Um, you know, his own son served in the US military uh, and he's been in American public life for decades now. He was the vice president of the United States before becoming president. Um, and also, can you really say that he's corrupt? Where's your evidence for that? OK, first of all, I never said he was unpatriotic. Number two, the evidence is all over the place. There's a New York Post article. There's Peter Schweitzer's book, the testimony of the uh, of his son's uh, laptop and emails, the Bobolinsky oh, testimony. Oh, there is oh, evidence oh, all God. over the place. Get, a, get a different a talking point, will you, Ed? Political Hold fire, JC. Politics. Carry on, Ed. Carry on, Ed. Yeah, the man is provably corrupt. The reason that a lot of people don't know about it is because the, the left-leaning press, the media, would not cover it. In fact, before the election, uh, Twitter blocked the New York Post story that that exposed Joe's corruption. So we've been lied to. A lie. We've been kept in the dark. And, and people like this man here tell us how wonderful things are. John, I don't John, know what planet he's living John, on. John, it's yeah. not the same one I'm living on. John, John by Christopher, the way, my yeah. mouth is not half open. It's all the way open. I'm glad to hear it. John Christopher Boer, uh, there you go. That's the uh, contention, the point made by Ed Brodo, which is that Joe Biden is as bent as a nine dollar note. I don't like I'd, I'd like to see this uh, this fellow here's medical degree, because I don't think he's a psychologist and he's certainly not a psychiatrist. He has no authority to say that the president is senile. That's the kind of cruel and vicious anti-American slang that's going on by the extreme right. And he seems to have found his niche. 
I wonder if he's in bed with the with the GOP. I, I wonder if he's in bed with the with the uh, with the Rifle Association. You know, it was uh, Richard Nixon who said years ago, "Watch out the, if, with that Rifle Association. They'll try to take. They'll try to say we're going to take their guns away from them." We had nineteen children slaughtered, and his party. I assume you're a Republican, Ed. Uh, have have been co cohabiting with the with the. The, the National Rifle Association, they continue. We've had more deaths of children by guns. That is now the number one for, cause of death in America, more than car accidents, more than drownings. And it's, it's a crime. And we should, we hopefully will have some, some understanding and some sympathy and some Republicans and Democrats can talk together so we can have what you have in the UK after the terrible Dunblane incident in Scotland, where I saw Her Majesty actually deliver flowers to that town. And you changed the laws there. You worked on the laws. We, we would need, we need very desperately to have real uh, uh, gun limitations on dangerous, dangerous weapons that are, only should be used in combat. Now an 18 year old kid went in and bought one. How does that happen? And how, is, how has our country been taken over by this vicious group of, okay. of political totalitarians? And Putin, okay. as we know, has been involved in the elections. And Biden okay. is not corrupt. And he's not the, the, the uh, political, geo that the political GOP liars put up every day coming out of the GOP. I see you, you weigh me down, I'm done. Well, uh, okay. I'm done. P put down your weapon. <laughs> Uh, because Ed Brodo, Joe Biden is on the right side of the gun argument. Excuse me? Joe Biden hey. is on the right side of the gun argument after that tragedy in Texas this week. The president is right. No, he's not. He's not. <laughs> well, there you go. Surely... Any but, legislation that saves I the child why, of one child at primary right. school, Ed, is worth, worth I, it. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Uh, surely any legislation that saves the life of one American child is worth it. Yeah, but what he's proposing is not going to do that. The problem is, is what not is the gun. Proposing? The problem is that we have a despising of law and order by Democrats all across the country. If we, if we respected the rule of law, we wouldn't be encouraging people to commit these kinds of atrocities, number one. Number two, taking guns away from people would not stop someone like this shooter. These people will find well, guns and criminals a, will a, find a guns. Peeler? So the whole argument about taking guns away is the wrong argument. And, and now, can we deal with one final aspect, gentlemen, whilst I have you, and it is... Joe Biden's fitness for office. I hasten to add that when Donald Trump was president, there was a lot of media scrutiny about his health, about his mental health, his physical health, and whether he actually had dementia. So it's important that we, uh, that we look at the health of whoever is the sitting president. Uh, take a look at uh, this video, this short clip of Joe Biden in action. First of all, here he is uh, discussing a kleptocracy. We're gonna seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy, uh, yeah, kleptocracy, and klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> and with mid-air. So, look, there are many such videos. We saw the president struggling to walk up the steps of his airplane earlier this week. Um, and, and there are so many malapropisms. They happen almost daily, John Christopher Boer. Where's so is, 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 is Joe Biden Trump fit clip? for high office physically? Where's the Trump clip? Well, there aren't many damning clips of Donald Trump in terms oh of his goodness. cognitive yeah, health. Yeah, I'm there, sorry, John Mark. You've always been a bright guy. You've always been an honest guy. I've been at the White House. We didn't even understand what Trump was talking about. I don't even get into the personal hygiene aspect. But Joe Biden, although he had a stammer, just like your king, the, 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 the father of, of her love, the wonderful Queen Elizabeth, and he worked on it. There's a brilliant movie, as you saw, King's Speech. He, he was he was bold and, and, and courageous. And Joe Biden recognized that he had a stammer. He, in fact, stutters even, even today. And this is an issue that he's won over himself. And that is a tough thing. He's even embraced children 
who've had this particular affliction, and he's praised them. Now, we could line up a, a, a clip of Donald Trump, and I have to say, I, I see Joe Biden often. I listen to him. I ask him questions. He is perfectly sound, and I'm not a medical doctor, and I will not say that he's anything is wrong with him. I wouldn't say anything is wrong with Trump. But thank God he's not in the White House at the moment. Uh, JC, I take your point about the stammer, but only a few weeks ago, Joe Biden accidentally said that America's policy in relation to Russia is regime change. This guy's got to go in reference to Putin. Minutes later, the chief spokesperson for the White House said that's not U.S. foreign policy. So this guy doesn't just stammer. He says the well, wrong things by mistake, which could be said, a national security issue, not just for America, but for the free okay, world. Well, let, hold on one sec. Let me give you an answer for that, because I, I actually know about this. He said that he shouldn't remain in power. OK, now the, the people got all up in arms because of that. So, you know what I did? And I did talk about Twitter. Ed, you would probably appreciate this. I, t I took a photograph of Hitler in his uniform. And I said, would there be such a brouhaha if Franklin Delano Roosevelt back in 1944 during D-Day during, during said that this man should no longer be in power? And the answer is, what's the big deal? We all know Putin shouldn't be in power. Perhaps there, there's an issue of, of, of na national uh, 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 legal legality there. And Biden backed down on it. But I, I stand firmly that Putin should not remain in power. However you want to deal with that, whether it's all of us allies, including now Sweden and Finland coming together, thanks to Joe Biden maintaining NATO. Trump tried to rip it to pieces. And I think we should stand by our president when he says that Putin should not remain in power. He's, you know, we all say things, we all take things back. Republicans, Democrats, I myself have made, you know, mis misstates and, uh, and, and uh, uninformed answers to questions. But, uh, you know, let's all give each other a break. And, Ed, I want, you, I want you to know something. I think you're a decent guy. And I don't see you hanging. I think you're actually not even a bad-looking chap. So let's, let's you and I end this on a nice note. Mark and I have had battles, and I've battled with some of his people. And we've tried to keep things, keep hope alive, as Martin Luther King said. Well, I'm loving that. It's been a very uh, flirty uh, big question tonight. And, uh, Ed, You've uh, been described as aroused and in bed with lots of different people. And apparently you're a good looking guy as well. Um, I'm going to yeah. have to deliver some tough love in your direction, though, Ed Brodo. Where is your evidence that Joe Biden is physically unfit for high office? Well, you know, the issue is not whether Putin should remain in power. The issue is that Joe is constantly saying things and then his people have to walk them back because he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, his own actions. You just played the, you just played the clips. All you have to do is watch him and listen to him. And I think any sane person can see clear evidence that the man is not fit to sit in the White House. And, I, you know, just because uh, this man grew up a half a block from me, you know, this is incredible. I not believe this stuff I'm hearing. Where, where did you find this guy? This is all. Biden is, is inept. Harris is also inept. The whole world knows it, except this man here. He doesn't know it. He thinks everything is great. And the company. The I don't think is anything great. is great. And I don't think we're fit up again. To be president. And we're going to get him out in November. And will you ask him to let me speak, please? Jesus. Oh, well, if you if you finish uh, your point, please, Ed. Uh, I, my prediction is that the Democrats are going to get wiped out in the November elections. We're going to take back the House and the Senate. And we're going to take back the presidency in 2024, because the majority of the American people are fed up. Uh, well, look, uh, let me uh, direct my viewers to the title of your new book, Ed Brodo. It's all about Joe Biden. It's called America on its knees. The cost of replacing Trump with Biden. It's out now. And may I direct you to John Christopher's fantastic podcast. It's called The Real Political Podcast, R-E-E-L. Well worth a listen. He is the co-founder of Real Political News and a highly respected uh, Washington-based political analyst. Gentlemen, what a brilliant conversation. Do join us again soon.